Hello, my name is Jennifer Porter and I'm a program engineer with the City of Tallahassee. There's been a lot of information in the news lately about lead in drinking water and my presentation today will provide you with information on lead itself, the history of regulation of lead in drinking water, the problems that they experienced in Flint, Michigan, and the differences between the City of Tallahassee water system and Flint's water system. There are several metals that are good for the human body that help us with our processes. Lead is not one of them. Lead does not serve any useful purpose in the human body, and in fact, its presence can lead to toxic effects. Children are more susceptible to problems associated with lead exposure and can experience behavior problems and learning disabilities. When adults are exposed to lead, they have problems with many of their body functions, including neurological problems, cardiovascular problems, kidney disease, and reproductive issues. Many of you probably remember the news from the 1970s about lead-based paint and children having learning disabilities after eating paint chips. Paint chips are a tangible example of how lead gets into the body, but how does lead get into drinking water? In most cases, lead isn't naturally occurring in the drinking water. Instead, it comes from the pipes that distribute the water from the distribution system to the homes. Especially before 1986, lead was a common component of fixtures, solder, and pipes in the system. Just having lead in the pipes, however, is not what causes lead to be in the drinking water. It's the combination of the lead in those pipes and the corrosivity of the water itself. When corrosive water comes in contact with lead in the pipes, it breaks down the pipe material, causing lead to leach into the drinking water. EPA and other regulatory bodies have long been aware of the problems when lead is consumed in drinking water, so much so that it was included in the original Safe Drinking Water Act in 1974. In 1991, the lead and copper rule provided more stringent requirements for both lead and copper, including corrosion control treatment requirements to keep lead out of the drinking water. With all the regulations in place and all the knowledge about the problems that lead causes when it's consumed, how does a crisis like the Flint, Michigan lead problem happen? In Flint, it was a combination of several factors including the water source itself and the piping involved in the system. The problems that arose in Flint were the result of a perfect storm of five major factors. First off, the water source itself. Originally, Flint was receiving its water from the city of Detroit, which got its water from Lake Huron. They switched to the Flint River. Both of these water bodies are surface water bodies, and they're under constant impact from the environment, including things like runoff and rainwater. The Flint River, because it is smaller than Lake Huron, is more susceptible to those impacts, and it was determined that the concentration of chloride in the river was nine times greater than it was in Lake Huron. Complicating the water source issues encountered in the Flint River was the fact that water treatment was not required in order to minimize the corrosivity of the water from the Flint River. A further complication arose because about half of the service lines leading to the homes in Flint were constructed of lead. One of the biggest problems encountered in Flint was the lack of regulation with regard to drinking water quality. The Michigan Department of Environmental Quality incorrectly interpreted the lead and copper rule and allowed water to be sent to the distribution system and to the customers before it was properly tested for corrosivity. The final component of the Flint, Michigan lead crisis revolves around management and their decision to change the water supply in order to save $5 million over two years. Management was hesitant to return to the City of Detroit drinking water system even after receiving water quality complaints and determining that the Flint River water was unsuitable. There are a number of differences between the Flint, Michigan water system and the City of Tallahassee water system, so let's go through each of the components. First off, the city of Tallahassee receives its water from the Florida Aquifer, which is the largest, most prolific aquifer in the world. Because it's a groundwater source, it's not subject to the runoff or surface water intrusion that they encountered in Flint. The water is naturally non-corrosive and has a very consistent water quality, including the components of pH and hardness. In addition, chlorides, which were found to be very high in the Flint River, are instead very low in the Florida Aquifer. Because of the consistent environmental quality of the water, water treatment for corrosivity is not required in the City of Tallahassee water system. Our source system and home sampling results have indicated that treatment for corrosion control is not necessary. In Flint, it was determined that the cause of the corrosivity was chlorides in the river. 
There are a number of ways to look at corrosivity. In this particular slide, the Langelier Saturation Index looks at hardness, pH, and total dissolved solids. Sample results for the city of Tallahassee water indicate that our water is in the near balanced category of this corrosivity scale. This means that it doesn't contribute scale to the pipes and it also doesn't cause corrosion. The city of Tallahassee has a very proactive approach to maintaining its infrastructure. In fact, in advance of the 1991 lead and copper rule, the city identified all the lead piping and lead home service lines and replaced them. Our system is highly regulated by the Florida Department of Environmental Protection. Every three years, we're required to take tap samples from 50 homes and businesses. Our analytical results have shown that lead is not an issue in the city of Tallahassee water system. Finally, management of our system includes budgeting and a program for replacing aging infrastructure. Our budget is supported by a water master plan which was recently approved for nearly $50 million over 30 years. In addition, we have a downtown pipe replacement program and a galvanized and older pipe replacement program. The quality of the City of Tallahassee drinking water and the drinking water system has been recognized by the Florida Department of Environmental Protection and the American Water Works Association. In 2008, 2015, and 2016, the City of Tallahassee water has been voted the best tasting drinking water both regionally and statewide. For more than 100 years, the City of Tallahassee has provided safe, reliable, and award-winning drinking water to our customers. Our commitment runs deep. From rigorous testing to continual infrastructure improvement, our field crews, water quality technicians, and engineers are dedicated to serving the needs of the customers of the City of Tallahassee.